The story of Joseph is one of the most beautiful of all stories. Joseph represents an example of courage in facing injustice and the difficulties of life. Joseph's father, Jacob, had twelve sons from whom descended the twelve Jewish tribes, Joseph and Benjamin, were sons of Rachel, Jacob's favorite wife. Joseph's story begins with a dream that he had and he told it to his father, My father, I saw eleven stars, and the sun, and the moon, I saw them prostrate before me. Jacob managed to interpret the dream and saw the future greatness of Joseph and said to him, Do not tell this dream to your brothers, who would, certainly, plot against you. Joseph's brothers learned of this dream and were very jealous of it. They decided to kill him and said, Joseph and his brother Benjamin are more loved by our father. It is evident that our father is mistaken. Let us kill Joseph or abandon him in an unknown land. Thus, our father's attention will be all for us, and we would be well regarded. One of them said, Do not kill Joseph, if absolutely necessary, rather throw him at the bottom of a cistern, so that some caravans can find him and take him away. They asked their father for permission to take him in a day trip, saying, Let Joseph come to have fun and play with us tomorrow, we will watch over him. The father said, It saddens me that you take him with you, I fear the wolf will devour him while you pay no attention to him. They replied, If the wolf eats him and we are so numerous, then we would be wretched. After much insistence, Jacob agreed that Joseph, who was twelve years old at the time, would go with them. On the way, they began to beat and insult him, showing him all the hatred they had for him. When they got to the cistern they stripped him naked and threw him in, then they went away. Joseph begged them not to leave him alone and naked in the damp cold of the cistern, but in their hearts there was no place for pity. Before reaching home, they killed a roe deer and stained Joseph's shirt with its blood. In the evening they returned to their father weeping and said, You won't believe us, but while we were playing chase each other, leaving Joseph to guard our stuff, he was devoured by a wolf and they presented him with his shirt, stained with blood. Jacob didn't believe them, and he said, What a merciful wolf! He ate my son without ruining his shirt. Your souls have suggested a crime to you. Jacob called upon God to give him the strength and composure to bear his great loss. As Joseph was weeping in the cistern, cold and frightened, God inspired him by saying, You will remind your brothers of what they have done when they least expect it. It meant that in the future he would be the one to take his revenge on them. While he was in this pitiful condition, a caravan arrived. One of them went to draw water from the cistern. When the bucket came down, Joseph clung to it. The caravan driver said, Good news! There's a boy. When they pulled him out, they said, he's a beautiful boy. They were very happy because they had decided to sell him in the market to get some money. They thought him lost to his family or a slave run away from his master, so they hid him as if he were merchandise. Arriving in Egypt, they sold him at a low price for a few pieces of silver. They had no idea of the value God attributed to him. The one who bought it in Egypt was the treasurer of the king of Egypt, that is, the minister of finance, and had the title, El Aziz, who immediately felt sympathy for Joseph and said to his wife, Treat him well, he will be useful to us, perhaps we could adopt him as a son. Since they couldn't have children. And so Joseph lived in the house of the Aziz. Joseph's life up to that point looked so dramatic, he was estranged from his parents, beaten, and thrown into the well by his brothers, and sold in the market as a commodity, but this was the first step towards a life filled with glory and success. Joseph moved into a comfortable and luxurious house of a rich and powerful man, and his wife who, unable to have children, treated him like a son. Joseph growing up became more and more beautiful and wiser, he was the most beautiful man of his time. God taught him the interpretation of dreams and gave him prophecy of him as his father Jacob, his grandfather Isaac, and his great-grandfather Abraham. His master, 
as the years went by, trusted him more and more, and made him responsible for his house. Aziz's wife, Zulaika, was a young woman of almost 36, very beautiful, rich, with a lot of free time at her disposal, and with a husband who was always busy with his work. She lived in the same house for years with Joseph who was growing day by day before her eyes, he became a handsome and attractive young man of almost 25 years. The more time she spent with him, the more she felt attracted to this handsome young man of great charisma. Zuleika fell in love with Joseph and tried to show him her love in every way, but Joseph didn't want to hear of it. She haunted him, showing off all her charms, and he always tried to escape from her temptations. Joseph didn't want to betray his master who treated him like a son. Exasperated, she had all the access doors to the house closed and said to him, Here I am at your disposal. Joseph didn't accept her proposal, saying, My master gave me a good welcome, how could I do him this great wrong and betray the trust he places in me? She kept asking him, and he kept pushing her away, calling on God to save him from her. When he was about to give in, Joseph heard a voice, perhaps it was the Archangel Gabriel, who warned him. So, Joseph ran towards the door of the house to run away from her, and she ran after him and in an attempt to hold him back, and grabbed hold of his shirt which she tore from behind. At that moment, the door flew open, and her husband appeared. Zuleika, irritated by his rejection, told her husband that Joseph had tried to harm her and said, What does he deserve who wanted to hurt your wife? Only prison or a painful punishment. Joseph said, It is she who wanted to entrap me. A witness from her family intervened and said, If Joseph's shirt is torn from the front, she is telling the truth and he is a liar. If instead the shirt is torn at the back, then she is lying and he is telling the truth. Given that the shirt was torn at the back, there was no doubt that her wife was the wrongdoer. The husband said, Go now, Joseph. The husband indignantly turned to his unfaithful wife and said to her, Ask forgiveness for your sin, indeed you are guilty. Rumors went around, and people in town were murmuring, everyone was talking about Zuleika and her servant. High society women gossiped, the Aziza's wife tried to attract her young servant, her love for him made her blind. It seems that she is completely lost. Hearing their gossip, Zuleika invited them to a banquet, had fruit, prepared, and gave them sharp knives to cut it. Making Joseph enter in the room suddenly, the women looking at him cut off their fingers without realizing it. They exclaimed, May God protect us from this beauty too. This is not a human being, but a most noble angel. Then Zuleika said to them, He is the one for whom you offended me. I tried with him with all my graces, but he refused to give in. But that's enough, if he doesn't do what I command him, he will be sent to prison and he will be among the most miserable. Joseph preferred prison rather than doing what they are asking him for, he called upon God to remove from him the snares of Zuleika. In an attempt to save the reputation of the great notable whose wife was the talk of the whole city, it seemed to them convenient to send Joseph to prison for a time even though they had evidence of his innocence. Any person in Joseph's place would have done the opposite, not all of course in order to save himself from prison and he would have submit to Zuleika's irresistible charm. Joseph had the true fear of God. A truly fearful knows his limits, he is aware of not crossing the line that divides the right path and the wrong path. Joseph was abandoned by all, except by God, and he never stopped thanking him, praising him, even in prison where he remained for a long time. There, Joseph befriended the prisoners, helped them, giving them his affection, and interpreting their dreams. Together with him they imprisoned two young men. The two young men became friends of him. Each of them received a dream. One of them said, I saw myself in a dream crushing grapes. The other said, I saw myself carrying a basket of bread on my head and the birds were eating it. The two said, O oh Joseph, explain to us the interpretation of all this. 
Before answering their questions, Joseph taught them the religion of his ancestor Abraham. He tried to convert them to faith in the oneness of God so that both of them and especially the one who would soon be sentenced to death could save his soul. Joseph's cult and faith were the characteristics that had struck his fellow prisoners to the point of prompting them to turn to him to interpret their dreams. Joseph said to them, One of you will be set free and become the butler of the king, while the other will be crucified and the birds will peck at his head. The butler's job was to taste the wine before offering it to the king. Joseph's predictions came true, one of them was hanged and the butler was released. When the butler was released, Joseph asked him to remember him with his king and to tell him the story of an innocent prisoner. But Satan, the enemy of mankind, made the butler forget to tell his lord about Joseph. Thus Joseph was forgotten in prison for nine long years, who bore them with faith and patience, trusting in God's justice. One day the king of Egypt had a dream and said to his men, I dreamed of seven fat cows, chased by seven lean cows, the latter turned into monsters, and devoured the fat ones. Then I saw on the bank of the Nile, seven ears of wheat, green and full, which disappeared into the mud. And their place was taken by seven ears, dry and empty. You wise men, reveal to me the meaning of this vision of mine. They replied, confused nightmares. We don't know how to interpret nightmares. The news of the dream reached the king's butler, who, remembering Joseph, immediately went to tell the king about it and said, Joseph is the only one who can interpret this dream. When I was in prison, he had recommended me to tell you his story, but I forgot. Leave it to me, I will let you know the explanation. So the butler went to Joseph and told him about the king's dream. Joseph said to him, You will cultivate for seven years, as is your custom. Everything you have collected must be left aside to preserve it, except for the little you will consume. Then come seven years of famine, you will consume all that you have saved, except what little you will keep. A year will come later in which the people will be relieved by the rains, fertility returns, and there will be so much prosperity that people will queue in front of the presser to press olives, grapes, and other fruit. When Joseph's interpretation was told to the king, he was amazed and immediately commanded, Release him and bring him here to me. When the messenger reached Joseph, he refused to leave prison until his innocence was proven, and said, Return to your lord and ask him, What happened to the women who cut off their hands? Joseph wanted to leave prison with his head held high, and only after his innocence had been recognized. The king called the women and said, What is your story with Joseph? What do you think of him? They replied, We have nothing bad to say about him. He always behaved well. He never sinned with any of us. The king looked at Zuleika, the wife of Aziz. She was pale and sad. She missed Joseph and she really wanted to see him. She confessed the whole truth saying, By now the truth is evident. I was the one trying to attract him. I regret how I behaved with him. Her love for Joseph changed Zuleika, she became purer, she wanted to correct her image and she didn't want him to look at her as a sinner, she converted to her faith in the oneness of God and she remained in love with him for all these years. When the king was sure of his innocence, he said, bring him to me, I want to have him by my side. Joseph entered the king's court and said, I have solicited this inquiry so that my master knows that I have not secretly betrayed him. When the king began to talk to Joseph, he was amazed at his knowledge and wisdom. They talked about his dream and Joseph explained that the famine would spread in and around Egypt and that Egypt had to prepare itself to face this serious situation. The king said, From today in our court you will have absolute authority and trust. The king appointed Joseph as his advisor and keeper of the grain stores, then after Aziz's death became his successor, so he was rewarded by God for his faith and patience. Joseph was not looking for wealth or power, on the contrary he had an almost impossible mission, that of managing the economy of peoples in famine for seven years. The seven years of prosperity quickly passed, the seven years of famine arrived, 
hunger dominated the whole region, only Egypt, thanks to Joseph's work, had to eat. Egypt began to distribute food among the peoples of the area with a system that resembles that of the family booklet. Not everyone who had money could buy the amount of food they wanted, but a load of grain was distributed each. Joseph's brothers went to Egypt to stock up on grain. Only Benjamin remained in Palestine with his father who feared the jealousy of his brothers. They lined up among the large hungry crowd. They met Joseph. He recognized them, but they didn't. He pretended not to know them. There were ten brothers with eleven camels, an extra camel to buy a load for his absent brother Benjamin. Joseph asked them why they were ten with eleven camels, and they said, We were twelve brothers, one of us left, and we remained eleven. We have a younger brother who stayed with our father, and we brought his camel to take his load. Joseph explained to them that the rules do not allow them to deliver loads for absent people, but this time he would make an exception on one condition, that next time they bring their brother with them to be able to give him his load of grain, and he said threatening, if you don't bring it, there will be no more loads for you from me. They said, we will do everything possible to convince our father. Joseph told his employees, hide their goods in their luggage, they'll know it when they get home. They were the goods that had to be exchanged for the grain, because in exchange for the grain everyone had to bring some products of his country. When the brothers returned to their father, they said to him, O oh father, because of your morbid attachment to Benjamin we could no longer have other loads. Let him come with us, only then we could get supplies and we will certainly watch over him. Jacob bitterly replied, Who are you telling? Shall I entrust Benjamin to you to look after in the same way I entrusted you with Joseph many years ago? When they then unpacked, to find that their goods had been returned to them, they said, O oh father, what more could we wish for? Here our goods have been returned to us. Now we will take the opportunity to increase the amount of provisions for the family. We definitely need to bring our brother with us to get another load of camels, it's not the end of the world. After much discussion, Jacob agreed to send Benjamin with them on the condition that they swear to God to bring him back. After they had sworn in they said, God is the guarantee of what we say. Arriving in Egypt, Joseph gave his brothers hospitality in his house. At the right moment, away from their eyes, Joseph confided his identity to Benjamin and asked him not to reveal the secret to the other brothers. He wanted to teach them a lesson before revealing his identity. Joseph had decided to keep Benjamin with him in Egypt and not send him with them. And to do that, he had a plan. He had the brothers' camels loaded with supplies by hiding the king's golden cup, a container with which food was measured, in Benjamin's sack. And as they were leaving, a guard overtook them shouting, Oh, you of the caravan, you are thieves. The brothers were amazed by asking, What are you looking for? The guard replied, The king's cup, a load of camel as a reward for the one who will bring it back. They complained, We have not come here to cause trouble in your country, much less are we thieves. The guard asked them, What will be the punishment if you lie? They replied, He in whose luggage you find the cup will remain your prisoner, this is how we punish the traitors. Joseph started rummaging in their bags then took the cup out of Benjamin's bags. One of the brothers said, If he stole, his brother also stole before, referring to Joseph. Joseph hid his pain in his heart, showing them nothing. Then they began to plead, Our father a very old man, he will not bear this disgrace. Take one of us instead of him. Joseph replied, We do not put an innocent person in prison instead of a guilty one, because in that case we would be unjust. They begged Joseph for a long time to free Benjamin. The soldiers made them understand that there was nothing more they could do and that his brother was now their slave. The desperate brothers gathered in conversation. The eldest said, Remember how your father made you swear to God to bring Benjamin back and how we deceived him once before about Joseph? I will never go home. I will stay here until my father gives me permission to come back and tell him what happened. 
They arrived home without Benjamin and his older brother and told Jacob the whole story. Jacob did not believe them and thought they had gotten rid of Benjamin as they did Joseph in the past. All the old pain and suffering of losing Joseph came back to him, and he began to cry until his pupils went white and he lost his sight from the pain. He always cried in secret, but his children noticed that he was no longer seeing and blamed him, but he said, I feel that Joseph is still alive, go my children, look for Joseph and his brother, who knows that God will give them all back to me. Thus, Joseph's brothers returned to Egypt, economically and psychologically destroyed. They met Joseph and said to him, O oh prince, misfortune has befallen us and our family. Seeing their pitiful conditions, Joseph felt sorry for them, so he decided to reveal his true identity and said to them, Don't you remember what you did to Joseph and his brother with your ignorance? They recognized him and said, But then you really are Joseph, really him? He replied, Yes, I am Joseph and this Benjamin is my brother. God has filled us with grace. God rewards those who are fearful, patient, and do good. They replied, Of course God preferred you to all of us. We were truly evil. The brothers were terrified. They believed that Joseph wanted to take revenge on them. But he said to them, reassuring them, Today you will not suffer any reproach. May God forgive you, he is the most merciful of the merciful. Go with this shirt of mine by placing it on my father's face he will regain his sight. Bring him to me, together with you and your families. The brothers returned home and as they were approaching their father's tent, Jacob said, I can smell Joseph. Rubbing Joseph's shirt on his face, the miracle happened. He regained his sight and strength to travel to Egypt and embrace his missing son again. They all left, Jacob, his wife, his children, and their families. Joseph had his parents ascend the throne, and all bowed before him, the father, the mother, and the eleven brothers, showing their respect and esteem towards him. Then Joseph said, O oh, Father, this is the meaning of my old dream, my Lord has fulfilled it. He was good to me when he released me from prison, and he brought you here after Satan came between me and my brothers. Truly my Lord is the knowledgeable, the wise. O oh, my Lord, you gave me the power and you taught me the interpretation of dreams. O oh, Creator of heavens and earth, you are my protector, in this life, as in the next. Let me die a Muslim, and put me among the devotees. Afterwards, all the family lived happily in Egypt for many centuries. <laughs>